Hi and welcome to Project Marlin. Um, this is a bit of a tongue-in-cheek video in response to Laurie's uh, eight reasons to buy a fire engine or why you should own a fire engine. Um, and this is eight reasons why you shouldn't buy an airport fire engine. Uh, whether we get to eight reasons I don't know because I'm making this up as I go along, much like most of my videos. Uh, reason one, they are expensive compared to a fire truck. Um, for what I paid for this, I could have had a fleet, fleet of fire engines. Um, a couple of years ago and uh, they would have probably been better nick <coughs> so they're expensive even a cheap one is up around the ten thousand pound mark really um i've not seen one cheaper yet might be out there not seen one yet reason two they're huge um if you're going for a major phone tem tender even the four-wheel ones are quite big they're significantly bigger than a four-wheeled um, uh, like domestic appliance um, then you get up to the, the, the big end uh, some of the old chubs this thing um, some of the Oshkosh they're ridiculously big um, you're looking this is the size of a static caravan <laughs> and you can't just drive it on the road without a movement order and even then I'm not quite sure quite what the regs are going to be uh, we'll worry about that in 10 years time when Hopefully it won't look like this. Um, three, they're, they're difficult to work on. Not in the fact that um, things are hard to get to. Well, some bits are hard to get to on the truck. Uh, but information is not as readily available as it is on some of the uh, domestic appliances out there. So information is hard to come by. Documentation is hard to come by. Uh, some of the more common trucks won't be quite so bad but even then um, the parts are not all off the shelf stuff um, or not easily to find off the shelf stuff which also adds to cost was that three or four I've lost count I think that was might have been, no that was three four um, people think you're a nutter I don't think no I do think I'm a nutter I, I know I'm a nutter um, but that's that's beside the point so <laughs> reason four is um, the, the, there isn't a massive following for airport fire trucks um, anywhere not compared to normal fire trucks even in the states where there is a bit more of a following um, but in the states everybody's about the Oshkosh or the E1 um, so we don't really have them over here as far as I know, there's none in preservation in this country. There might be, I'm not sure. Um, Preservation-wise in the UK, basically it's Carmichael or Chubb. Those are the two main groups. So anything that's outside of that, there's no real groups for, and there's no real support for, and there's no real information on, and even the, the normal fire, fire truck clubs, uh, fire truck clubs, fire preservation lot, they think these are great, but there's not that although there is a bit of a community it's it's quite a lonely community um if i'd gone out and bought a dennis um there would be a lot more guys that i'd be able to chat to and meet up with and swap parts and that thing because this is so unusual um the owners club for these is is me <laughs> um even for airport fire trucks i know um one two three four guys um, apart from myself that have got airport fire trucks um, in the UK I, I'm, I'll admit there's going to be more out there but these are the four guys I know one of the guys I don't think particularly likes me <laughs> and, um, and, and the other three although we've chatted um, quite a distance away they've, they've got very different trucks um, and there's not a lot to talk about um, really so it's it's a bit of a lonely Lonely Owners Club existence. Right, that's for five, five. So storage. Storage is a pain. Now this comes back in a way to two, which was size. I'm lucky I can keep this here. I'm unlucky is that my roof is the sky. Um, it's it's a pain um, to be able to get it into a building. We'd need to put it into the main grain shed, which is the only building on this site that's tall enough with wide enough bays for it to go into 
but unfortunately it's a grain shed and it's been used for grain so it can't live inside it has to live out here um, which is a bit of a bugger and, and to rent a unit that you could fit it in would out in this area would be horrendously expensive really hard to do um, the other thing is you might have noticed in, in the window I've got some keep off signs now because it's, because it's big and you can actually see it on Google Earth which isn't ideal <laughs> and uh, there's more traffic through this yard than there used to be um, it's attracted some attention and um, I've come around a couple of times to find all the lockers open there's a couple of bits of trim up on the roof that have been damaged because they've been thrown off the top of the roof luckily nothing else has really been messed with on it yet but that's the problem and, and if anything gets broke on this I'm, I'm, I'm buggered I can't, can't replace it um, easily uh, so it's five, six. I just thought six and it slipped straight out of my head. Six. You can't just. No, I've said that. That was that was to do with size again. You can't just jump in it and drive it on the road. Fuel economy. <laughs> Fuel economy. There you go, six. Fuel economy in these things. They run Detroit two strokes. Um. You, you may as well just stand pouring fuel onto the ground for the, for the way these things use fuel. Um, this is done a couple of miles around the yard, backs and forwards. Sat and idle a little bit. It's sat at high high idle uh, because these things don't like ticking over. They will, they tick over all day, but they glaze the bores and they start puking oil into the air boxes, which this one does do a little bit. Um, hopefully it's not too bad. And once we've got it running again, we can get some high revs on it, uh, maybe load it up with some water through the pump and, and store the gearbox a bit, put a bit of load on it, hopefully that'll start taking the glaze off the boards without pulling the heads off. Um, if it's gone too far, we'll have, the heads will have to be pulled off and we won't go into that. So that's six, seven. Give me two seconds. Uh, I've got to think about this. This really was an off the, off the cuff video. I want to get to eight. I really want to get to eight. So, um, Listen here, we're carrying about the economy. So, just just an example. 40 litre tank. 40, 45 litre tank. Um, we reckon, not litre, sorry, gallon. We think it'll do about one to the gallon. This is what a lot of the Detroit guys have, have said to us. Um, but it also, you've got uh, 60 litres of oil in the transmission, about 45, 50 in the engine fluids there's a lot of fluids in this thing it's not it's just it's a pain hold on i'm going to pause you while i think got it so one of the ones that laurie came up with was you can convert them into things and use them for different things well my side lockers although they're quite deep they're low not easy to look into apart from these ones up here which are small so you don't actually have a lot of stowage there's, there's a surprising lack of stowage space on this truck um, some in the back end um, up here they're not very big they're funny shaped they're awkward these are quite big you get a generator in the other side which is, um, but then you've got the BCF system in the other side which takes up a lot of room this side's got pump outlets in um, a bit like on the back of a normal truck you've got the two pipe outlets for your hoses that's all in this locker so there's not a huge amount of storage so you could go camping with it if you could find a road wide enough and a campsite big enough and um, it wouldn't be great <laughs> but also converting them so converting to a bar converting to a limo converting to a camper most big four-man cab so you can take the seat out from behind you can put a single bed across so yeah it's camper sorted water tank water tank is what four foot tall it doesn't go down below this level you can't go down any further than this level because the gearbox actually sticks up into the tank slightly so <laughs> So to make that into a camper where you could walk around in it, you would have to change the gearbox to something much smaller. Uh, something much smaller might not take the power of the engine, might not take the torque, might not be able to move the weight. Conversion is pretty much unconvertible. And if you look at my RV video, uh, there was a whole discussion where I went about a guy who's been talking about turning to a vacuum tanker for a slurry and stuff like that. And, uh, that's just a load of, what's it? A load of slurry. <laughs> it, 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 it would cost you, you could buy something for far less than it would cost you to convert something like this. And ground pressure, weight, fuel economy, all comes into it. Right, so I think that was seven. 
eight. I'm not just the 10 minute mark now, so this has gone on longer than I meant. Eight. Um, yeah, the worst thing about these is um, that they're absolutely awesome. Um, do you know what? Forget the rest of this video. Get the chance, come and buy one. Not this one, because it's mine, you're not having it. Buy one of these. Buy one of these. They're brilliant. You will regret it horribly. It will be a financial disaster. It will be a millstone round your neck. But <laughs> you won't regret it. Go and buy one. Give me a shout. We'll make a club. And um, anyway, that's it. That's enough. Thank you for watching. Um, click whatever you like. Um, <laughs> we'll see you next time. Cheerio.